Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. As I hinted in the last episode, I've been um, expanding out my science production a little bit as well as playing around with spaceships. So one of the ones I've done recently was taking energy science up to energy science level 3. So across here we've got my standard science park layout sort of thing going on. So I've got a big um, power supply going on down here and I've upgraded that a little bit. I've started using the pylon substations and then just building out this massive area of, of, of these flat solar panel twos and they're going they're working really well they produce loads of power each and i'm now yeah uh, i've got a decent amount of headroom in there and if we look back over the, the past there's, there's been a few times when it's those look like peaks to me so i think we may have had some issues back then but generally it's working pretty well we've got lots and lots of power coming in I think I... Oh yes, I expanded the uh, cooling out here as well by the... This this one's a slightly uh, different way of doing it. I've dropped... Instead of just putting in more and more and more of the coolers, I put in one of the wide area beacons and these allow you to put loads of modules in. As you can see, it's got what's this, um, 15 module slots in it. So I can fill this up. I filled this up mostly with speed modules and also some efficiency modules so that I don't use quite as much power from, um, from down here. And then along with those and the efficiency and speed modules in all of these, I've got these running at... Um, plus 260% speed, so three and a half times their normal speed, whilst still only using 20% more power than they normally would. So I think that's a pretty good trade-off. And then down here, these are obviously struggling a little bit more because I've gone for the full plus 220% power um, in order to get that. And actually, those are still only up at 260%, plus 260% speed as well because there's only room for two um, modules in these, where there's, where there's room for more in these ones. And these things, they don't use all that much power. As you can see, it's all measured in kilowatts. So, it, and especially these ones, it's hardly any. So, I'm pretty happy with the um, with just having them them using a bit more power than they normally would. Now, one thing that's worth noting is here, I am using the the slow thermofluid cooling recipe, which um, takes um, 200 seconds at normal speed to to chill 500 uh, thermofluid down to 499 thermofluid at minus 10. And the reason I'm using the slow one is because it's a bit more it's more efficient in the amount of thermofluid that gets lost in the process. So if we look in here, um, I'm, so I'm turning this one into the other one. So this is the recipe I'm using. And as you can see, this 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 one you lose one in every 500. So that's um, at 0.2% and it, but it does take quite a long time to run. Alternatively you've got this one where you lose 2% and it's a, but it's much much quicker. Um, notably that it's divided by 10 as well so that's gone from 100 to 5 so it's twice the speed but you lose 10 times as much thermofluid in the process. Uh, that's unloading a barrel and then there's this one where you lose a whole 10% of it but it's again but it's again faster. Um, so we're going from 50 in 5 to 10 in 0.5. Um, so yeah, again, it's, it's I haven't, but I haven't bothered researching this one because I don't want to throw away 10% of my thermofluid. Yes, okay, it's being brought in by trains. There's lots of it being made, so it's not really a problem. But I think I want, I don't want. There's no point in just throwing stuff away for the sake of it when all I need to do to get round it is to have a few more of these machines, or put some, or put these speed modules in and some efficiency modules. So overall, I think this is this is the right way to do it. If there was a specific place where I needed needed to do it quickly and didn't care about efficiency, then sure, maybe I'd use one of the other recipes there. But in this case, I believe I strongly believe this is the right way to do it. And I've got the usual sort of business with pumps going on here to make sure that these tanks have always got some in so that these these can run off them, but also have all, uh, never fill up so that there's there's room for for the um, cool thermofluid to drain back down this pipe into the tanks. And this seems to be working at the moment, so yeah, pretty happy with that. I'm not sure why there's um, a couple of tanks of chemical gel here, given that doesn't seem to be pipe being piped into anything. I must have made a mistake when I was setting that up. Then here we've got the usual unloading systems. We've got um, we're unloading holmium cryonite plastic, uh, material science packs, and uranium. All the things I need for this for this area, and then immediately turning the holmium ingots into holmium plates because you don't need ingots anywhere. They're just good for transporting stuff around because they're a bit more compact. And then down here we've got a load more stuff. This is all being put onto a bus. And then up here, I've talked about all this before, so up here we've got, we're doing all the various things to make the science pack one. Um, so we've got the four data cards along here. Now I noticed this one actually seems to be running a bit slowly. I could do with another one of these machines, or maybe some, some extra modules in here to make this go a bit more effectively, because it's there, there isn't enough of this being pulled through. So that's something I should do at some point. 
Um, but the other three seem to be all right at, the, at least at the moment. Um, we're then feeding some of those. Yes, we're splitting them off here, and those are being fed up here to go into this, into this processing facility, so we can um, so we can make start making the science packs for uh, for tier two. <clears throat> They're then being unloaded merrily, but again, these ones are going a bit slowly. I need to come in and put in some more of these more of these electromagnetic facilities because there's. Actually, no. I take it back. There isn't a sh there isn't actually a shortage of these. Both both sides of the belt are completely full here. So these appear to be being produced at exactly the right speed, which is quite impressive. Um, I'm surprised. Things are almost never produced at exactly the right speed. They're always either too quick or too slow. But this appears to not be. It's not filling up along here on the top side of the belt, and also it's not retreating back up here. So I seem to have managed to find a balance, which is quite impressive. We're also doing um, all the other all the other sciences. This um, up up to here, where we're producing all of these science, all all these data cards, which is allowing us to make data science catalogs too. And so we've got the four computers here as usual because because it's a slower process, and they're being fed off to a railway station. Now the new part, the exciting part, is here. I've started building up new all the new types of science for um, for, for the uh, all the data cards for science pack or for catalog three energy catalog three, and so we've got these swirly things here. We've got these pandas here. What are they actually called? Uh, quark data and and entanglement data being produced here. They're reasonably straightforward. So I was quite surprised at how straightforward most of the recipes for um, for energy science three were. Um, this one, for example, it just takes in blank data cards and a proton stream. And then half the time it succeeds and produces a quark data. This one, you take in blank data cards and an ion stream, and only 20% of the time does it, does it actually work. But ignoring the fact that most of the time it fails, it's quite a simple recipe. There aren't very many inputs to it. And whether it fails 1% or 50% or 90% of the time, you still need to have an output splitter here to take the, um, the junk data cards away for recycling. So it's not too much of an issue, not too difficult. The only the only possible difficulty here is with throughput, and I've messed up my underground pipes here, so some of these machines aren't working. So that's something I'm going to need to come over and fix. Although that said, this one is currently keeping up. <coughs> it's this one that's the problem, and I'll touch on that in a moment. Next up, we have the um, superconductivity data, and again, this, this this actually this one's a bit more complicated. We need holmium cables and cryonite rods for this, so I had to start shipping in cryonite rods. That was an extra extra component for this. Um, for this facility, but that's going okay. We've got them um, make, making the cryonite rods. Oh, hang on. When we need the purple, pu what? This one. Yeah, <laughs> this one. So we need the holmium cables coming in. So I'm making, but I'm always already making those for something else. I think. Yes, down here we're making holmium cables for this step. So I just ensured there were enough machines. Piped it off down here, and we've got the cables coming in along here and being used for that as well. So that was again quite straightforward. I just need to bring in the cryonite. The most complicated one was this one, the um, lepton data. That sounds like a, um, a tube station for some reason. So here we've got the uh, pink clouds coming in, so we need to make pink clouds. And you make pink clouds out of orange clouds and, feed, and, and feeding in sand and material science packs. So again, I needed to bring in material science packs, but that's what trains are for. I needed to bring in sand, but I already had stone, so I was just crushing that. So that wasn't too difficult either. And then we, I, the other thing is that I need to make sure I had enough of the, the orange clouds, the, the what's this one? that's not an ion stream, that's a plasma stream being made in order to keep this running. And that, the plasma stream and the and the um, the green clouds for what, what are green clouds really called? Proton streams. This is where I've been starting to struggle a little bit. So the proton streams, especially, I we need to have a decent input of plasma streams here, and we've just about got that. And then you need to have a machine here making the making the green clouds in order to make send them off down there. And I need to have another one of these. I probably need to have another two of these actually. And at that point, I'm going to discover I'm using the plasma stream up too quickly. So I'm going to need to have a load more machines wherever it is I'm producing plasma stream. Maybe it's further down. No, it's all the way down here. So this tank here is actually slowly going down. So I'm going to need to put several more of these in here and these are all very ha power hungry oh and this is what chemgel is used for um oh that's why i'm running out okay here's another thing that needs to be fixed um apparently the oh this yeah this pipe is supposed to, oh no this pipe isn't supposed to go down there this pipe's supposed to go to here and then these are supposed to get filled up with chemical gel but for some reason they're not right okay 
So there are a couple of problems here. Um, the first one is that we're not bringing in chemical gel anymore for some reason, and that's meaning that these machines here have essentially more or less run dry, and so these aren't producing the um, the, pro the the plasma streams that we're going to need. Uh, the second problem is that we only have one machine here producing green clouds, uh, the proton proton streams. So we need to put in another one of these, and I just haven't got around to doing that yet. But I'm a bit concerned about that um, chemical gel not being a thing. So over here we've got 24,000 in these two. Why is chemical gel not being made? That comes from down here. This is making it, but in sort of fits and spurts. So we've not got enough petroleum gas coming through. Okay. So we've got to the point now where we're using chemical gel up fast enough that the system I've got here can't keep up with it. So I'm going to need to come along here and put in maybe another one of these machines. Or maybe even another one of these, actually. Because if we look up here, yeah, the light oil and the heavy oil are both full. But all the petroleum gas cans are basically empty. So I need to have more more cracking going on. So more of these two machines. Or maybe I just need to come along and module them up to the gills. Um, that's going to be my... Uh, yeah, that's going to be an important thing to do, I think. So to fix that, to fix the um, the energy science, I'm going to need to get the this sped up. And put, and put in another... Um, proton stream generator however apart from that <laughs> apart from the two ways it's the part apart from the couple of ways where it's just not working it is basically working <laughs> so up here you can see I've got here I've got six computers because it gets a chunk slower each time so you need to have more and more and more of the computers doing it and so in this case one when the um, when the lepton stream <clears throat> cards actually come up here there's one these machines will pick them up and they will start working we've got actually half of them are working at the moment so we're not too far behind but they'll run happily and then they'll kick out the um, the energy science catalog threes which can then go along here into this station as usual we've managed to fill that one up to 350 so we've got about 492 so there's quite some way to go this is this is maybe a, a fifth maybe 20 percent full for the amount we need to get before a train will come and pick them up but but that's okay it's working it's a working it's sort of a, a work in progress if you will then over here We've got the next level of the um, the actual producing the science, and this works in basically the same way that it does everywhere else. We've got our railway station here for energy science drop off. One of these is ready to take the tier tier three catalogs when they turn up and drop them onto this belt. They're then brought round here, along here, past here where they can be turned into um, into insights and I'll, I'll set that going once I've got a decent supply of them because at the moment making insights from the cheap ones is probably sensible but later I think fairly soon once this, once the supply is going making insights from these will also be making from them will be good as well and I'm going to, as I discussed in a previous episode before I can upgrade this to tier 4 I'm going to need to upgrade all of these and the other ones as well to tier 3 um, because of the logistics of getting uh, the blank data cards in and out um, check the previous check a couple of episodes ago if you want more details on that <laughs> And then over here, so we're building this pack one, passing the pack one over to here where they're being taken in to make pack two. Those are being passed around to here, ready to be taken in to make pack three. And pack three requires the insight, the significant data, the catalogue obviously, and the um, and and a holmium solenoid, as well as the um, what do we call it? As well as the insight, as well as the science pack twos. Uh, so that's nearly all there, apart from the catalogues. We're very 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 nearly there. Um, and then there's sort of the sorting out all of this. And I think, yes, I have actually put in... No, I haven't. <laughs> I have put in some of the belt required to uh, to take all these away. I still need to finish this one off and take another belt from here all the way across here, out to here, and feed it into the um, insert into this splitter over here in order to get it into the, into the science sushi. So that's that's to do, but that's a fairly easy job. Um, I also had to obviously, obviously had to make the... Uh, the holmium solenoids here, so that's uh, that's an, it was an, an, another machine I put in here, but this is all this is all just working. It's it's gone together quite easily. I've got a pattern here that I'm just following, and so it's quite easy to put put it all together. And so that's going to very soon. That's going to be um, energy science packs three. So I'll come back in the next episode to show you all about that once it's actually up and running. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out all the other videos. There's the uh, the streams on Thursday nights when I'm uh, playing this and. You can uh, you can see how it's going and what I'm up to. There's the um, Industrial Revolution on Mondays. That's carrying on there for, for now, although it might move in September. 
and there's GTA videos scattered around in the other gaps around the week as well and and of course these space exploration videos so there's plenty to watch <laughs> I hope you're enjoying everything on the channel and I hope to see you next time thanks for watching